Hello and welcome to my Celeste Crown of Majesty Sorcerer Class Guide, Levels 1 to 8. I'm your host, Mefru. So if this guide managed to help you out even a tiny little bit, please smash that like button. It'd be greatly appreciated. Alright, let's go. So in this guide, we're going to be going over the most optimal way to build a sorcerer at the start of the game. So let's make a new character. Let's do this. Right, so there's literally only one race that comes to mind when I'm going to build a sorcerer. That is the half elf. Reason being is we get six movement tiles. Pretty damn good. Ability score increased charisma plus two. So our main stats as sorcerer is going to be charisma, constitution, and dexterity in that order. So having charisma plus two is amazing. Plus, we get increased two other scores by one point each. Also amazing. Bonus skills. Choose any two skills. Also great. Dark vision. See normally in dim light and in natural darkness as if in dim light. Once again, darkness is real terror in this game. If you have no way of lighting things up or being able to see in the dark, you're going to be rawly screwed. Fate ancestry. Saving throw advantage against charm immunity to magical sleep. Stops all the shenanigans, all that random confusion crap, mind control crap, gives you a bit more saving throw advantage against it, which is also nice to have. Languages, common, elvish, and one language of your choice. Once again, sort out your languages between your party members and next. So we're going to be going sorcerer for the sorcerer guide. So the only thing that really stands out to me on this list is magical crafting. You have been trained to brew herbal remedies and use enchanting equipment. So what this means is that you don't need to pick up the academic uh, background to be able to enchant equipment. You literally have that built into you just like the wizard does as well. But obviously as a sorcerer, your intellect stat is not going to be the best. So sometimes it's actually kind of worth it to pick up on someone else just in case so you don't get negative rolls on your enchanting. If you've got negative rolls in your enchanting or your intellect like rose it means that the enchanting process will take longer to complete so it means it will kind of waste more time in the game trying to get the item that you're trying to craft so that's a sorceress origin so let's have a quick look at these so let's stop the draconic bloodline so draconic bloodline origin spells in your list always prepared shield misty step counter spell greater invisibility hold monster all these are pretty solid spells then we've got dragon ancestor choice select the type of dragon and associated damage type of your ancestor so this kind of affects what your damage type what your main damage is going to be as the draconic bloodline that you choose so obviously you've got all the different elements here they've got draconic knowledge you can speak draconic i haven't really noticed anything in the game where you can speak to dragons or anything like that so i don't think this has come into effect just yet over to draconic resilience you gain one additional hit point per level and your armor class is 13 plus dexterity bonus when you're not wearing armor so it gives you more health gives you more ac pretty nice to have onto mana painter so mana painters origin spells level one entangle level three bark skin level five sleet storm level seven fire shield and level nine conjure elemental this list isn't the best i mean some of the stuff's okay in here but you might as well take a druid if you want entangle and bark skin and also sleet storm as well i think the only thing that's actually kind of worth mentioning is conjure elemental which is actually quite a strong spell but you get it quite late in the game then we've got mana absorption your charisma modifier is used if higher instead of other ability modifiers on your saving throws against spells and other magic effects so nice to have but not game breakingly good child of the rift so child of the rift origin spells so we've got level 1 Guiding Boat, level 3 Aid, level 5 Daylight, level 7 Banishment, level 9 Greater Restoration. So Guiding Boat, yeah, Aid's pretty good. Aid's actually a pretty strong spell. Daylight's good as well. There's a lot of undeads in the game. We're literally in the campaigns I've been playing, so Daylight's always good to have. It's not even that situational because there's so many undead. Same again with Banishment. There's actually quite a lot of elementals in the main campaign, so you've got to find a lot of uses for the Banishment spell. Level 9, we've got uh, Greater Restoration. Greater Restoration is great. Literally, be able to dispel your pirate members, take off some nasty kind of like status effects. Always nice to have, especially on a sorcerer. Last but not least, we've got Rift Magic. Immediately after you cast a sorcerer spell of level 1 to 5, roll 1d20. If you roll a 20, which is the highest roll, your spell slot is not spent. So in theory, you're kind of like playing the casino a bit. If you get lucky and you manage to hit the 20s, you're going to keep casting spells non-stop. But if you get a bit unlucky, you might not ever see it proc. Last but not least, we have Haunted Soul. So Haunted Soul Origin Spells. We have level 1 Inflict Wounds. We have level 3 Ray of Enfeeblement. Level 5 Fear. Level 7 Phantasmal Killer. And level 9 Mind Twist. So these are all pretty decent spells to be fair. Inflict Wounds does a hefty amount of damage really strong especially if you start doing twin meta magic with it as well you're literally hitting like a truck with that a very strong level one spell then level three got ray of enfeeblement also fairly decent to have as well if you manage to actually hit it on someone it can actually really ruin the day if they are really strong in the strength department then fear once again great cc if you manage to hit it 
make them run away from you, keep them out of the fight, all good stuff. The only problem with that, it takes a concentration kind of slot. That's the only problem. You've got level seven Phantasmal Killer, does great damage, imagine you hit it, imagine you keep it on them, once again it takes concentration. Level nine, Mind Twist. Mind Twist is literally one of the most insane spells in the game. So we've got Spirit Visage here. You can use a bonus action to attempt to scare an enemy. That you can see within six cells of you, the target must make a wisdom saving throw, or they will have a disadvantage on ability checks and attack rows until the start of your next turn. So it's a wisdom check. Wisdom is normally one of the lowest kind of checks for most monsters in the campaigns. On top of that, it also kind of gives them disadvantage on their attack rolls, which is great as well. It's a bonus action, which also is amazing. And also to top it off, it gives a disadvantage on ability checks. So say for example, if I hit this first with bonus action, then try and hit a big beefy spell on them, I got more chance to hit just because I'm reducing their ability checks on my spells as well. So it kind of works as like a mini heightened magic. Okay, let's take a look at the higher levels. So I've got Vengeful Spirits. You can use a bonus action to call forth the spirits inside you for up to one minute. You can target a three by three cell area that you see within 18 cells. Any opponent that enters the area for the first time on a turn or start its turn, there must make a charisma saving throw or take 2d6 plus a charisma modifier in necrotic damage, half damage on a successful save. Each turn, you can use your bonus action to move that area by six cells. Once you use Vengeful Spirits, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest, unless you spend four sorcery points to use it again. So this is really, really strong. The damage is very high on it. It's a big AOE uh, kind of like area as well. On top of that, you can move it as well using your bonus actions. It costs a bonus action to put out, but that's not all. The best thing about this is it doesn't require concentration to keep it up. It's literally like a free flaming sphere that you can just use whenever you want or whenever you have the sorcery points to spare. And it doesn't take up a concentration slot. What more can you ask for? That's insane. Then what recharge vengeful spirits? Spend four sorcery points to recharge your vengeful spirits power. So as you know, it's pretty strong anyway. I mean, some of the time you can use it, depending on if there's quite a lot of enemies kind of grouped up, you might want to do that. Might want to actually reactivate it again to get more AOE kind of damage out. But it's really situational. It really depends on where you want to spend your sorcery points. We'll get into that a bit later on in the guide. Right, so we're picking Haunted Soul for this guide. So let's close this down and go next and have a look at the backgrounds. So backgrounds, let's make sure you've got everything covered by your party members. So depending what classes you have, really depends on what backgrounds you choose and depending what party kind of composition you have really affects what backgrounds you choose as well so for the basis of this guide we're going to be taking cell sword reason being is we get armored proficient with medium armor makes the sorcerer not such a lightweight so to speak in other words we can take a bit more of a beating we can avoid a bit more damage you know it's just nice to have a bit more ac on top of our sorcerer the personalities literally it's just flavor so whatever you fancy whatever you want to make your character you want to make them evil good go ahead right so over to the ability score screen so once again you decide how you want to play if you want to play with standard array and kind of slam things in there you know go ahead if you want to start re-rolling the dice get really really strong stats go ahead as well you decide how you want to play i myself i normally play a point by just because i find it's like the most challenging i normally play on the highest difficulty as well and i kind of like a balanced challenge as much as i can so let's start spending these points and have a look starting with strength so i'm gonna bring this up to 12. so as i said before in previous guides having strength and not at a minus is really good. Reason being is because you need to be able to climb and get to places easier. You need to be able to also jump across the platforms to get better vantage points. So having your strength fairly high is really good in combat. Next is Dex. So we're gonna bring Dex up to 13 for now. We still got some stats on the side here that we're not utilizing yet, but we're gonna put them in at the end just to show you what I've done. So Dex, once again, gives you AC, allows you to kind of like mitigate some damage as an avoid it. So it just makes the Sorcerer a bit more tanky. So Con, we're raising this to 15. Once again, we still got some points to spend at the end. So cons is kind of great. Gives you a bigger HP pool to play with. Sorcerers or sorceresses are very, very squishy. The AI has a habit as well of targeting the squishy people, especially if they're in the back line. So if you've got really low AC and a low HP, the AI is going to be like, what are you doing over there? We're going to go, you know, mess you up and ruin your day. So in other words, having a bigger HP pool, so in case you make a mistake or in case you just get focus fired is great because it means you survive longer. It means you're doing more damage. It means you're putting up more utility and more spells moving on to intellect so intellect is going to be our dump stat so we're not going to put a single point in intellect 
Wisdom, we're going to bring up to 10, just so we don't have negative saving throws to will. And Charisma is our main stat, which is going to bring all the way up to 16. So having high Charisma allows us to hit our spells more, allows us to do more damage. It's just always great to have a really high Charisma on a Sorcerer as soon as possible. So our last stats that we're going to spend here is we're going to put one into Dex, bring up to 14, increase our AC as you saw, and one more into Cons, bring our HP up to 9. So that's literally the end of the Attribute page. Let's go next. Okay, so in the Proficiency tab we're gonna take stealth first having a fairly good stuff is actually nice to have just because when you're walking into combat you want to kind of assess the situation first so you can plan ahead see what you're up against as well so you don't literally make any mistakes or don't get surprised mother duckered out of nowhere so i kind of like to take stealth from most of my characters i'm gonna take deception as well just because of uh, combat kind of dialogue things kind of helps you out the rp and also kind of helps you out with the skill checks during conversations and we'll take persuasion as well pretty much for the same reason and because we have a very high charisma stat moving on to languages once again just make sure you're not overlapping too much with languages at this moment in time they don't make that much difference i'm just gonna take giant at the moment and for my other one i'll take dwarvish and we'll go next okay on to spells so instead of talking about every single spell like i did in my wizard slasher class guide i'll put the link in the description i'm literally just going to kind of go through them give them all a rating out of five and the ones i've selected as you can see here i'll talk about them briefly it just saves a bit of time and makes the guide a bit more short and sweet so acid splash two out of five annoying b three out of five chill touch i give it four out of five reason being is necrotic damage is very hard to resist as in barely anything that has resistances to it it also gives the chilled effect as well where they can't regenerate or gain any hit points and on top of that there's a lot of undeads in the game as i mentioned previously in other guides so being at a semi undeads getting a disadvantage on attacking the caster is also a nice bonus because it is so many undeads to use it on dancing lights two out of five dazzle zero out of five Fire boat, I give it three out of five. A light, five out of five. Light, as I said before, is always needed. So I always love to have light on literally my main tank, just like the enemy, so all my kind of range attackers can hit them as well. Then we got poison spray, I give that two out of five. Ray of frost, four out of five. Shadow armor, zero out of five. Shadow Dagger. So the reason I've taken Shadow Dagger and Chill Touch is because sometimes the enemy will be behind cover or sometimes I have a really, really high AC. So I won't be able to hit them in the first place. So this actually changes my cantrip to kind of target their wisdom saving for instead of targeting their reflex saves. So this allows me to be able to have more consistent variation in what I'm hitting on the enemy. So Shocking Grasp. I'm tempted to give this a 5 out of 5, but I think I'll give it a 4 out of 5 just because it is quite shocking. I slept on this, I think, during my first playthroughs of the game, just because I didn't think it was that great, but it's actually very strong. So instead of using a kind of disengage to run away from an enemy, you can shock them and stop them from doing a reaction hit on you. So you're doing a tiny bit of damage and you're also running away instead of just running away from them. So I find this actually a really, really strong cantrip. Then we've got Sparkle. I'll give this a 3 to 4 out of 5, depending on the campaign that you're doing. Then True Strike, I'll give that a 0 out of 5. Burning Hands, 1 out of 5. Charm Person, 0 out of 5. Color Spray, 2 out of 5. Comprehend Languages, 0 out of 5. Detect Magic, 2 out of 5. Expeditious Retreat, I'll give that a 3 out of 5. We've got False Life here as well, 1 out of 5. Feather Fall, 3 out of 5. Fog Cloud, 3 out of 5. Inflict Wounds, 4 out of 5. I haven't picked this, it comes from my origin, but as you can see, the damage is really, really goddamn high in it. So it's strong anyway, and it's nice to have it in my kit. Then we've got Jump, 4 out of 5. Mage Armor, 2 out of 5. Magic Missile, 5 out of 5. Shield, 5 out of 5 as well. So I took Magic Missile because, I mean, I don't really need to speak for it. It can't miss. So if something's low, you can finish it off Magic Missile. At the beginning of the game as well, where you can barely hit anything because you've got such a low, you know, attack rows. This also helps as well. Then obviously you've got Shield, 5 out of 5, because if you somehow get in melee range, it gives you a chance to kind of survive a bit. And it lasts for the whole round as well. So if the first enemy attacks you and you put it up, it will last literally until your next turn. So if most enemies keep attacking you, they'll all miss as well. So it's a very really solid spell actually, Shield. A bit too strong in my eyes. Then what sleep, I'll give that a 2 out of 5. And we've got Thunder Wave, 3 out of 5. So identity. So you can make your character look like whatever you want. You can name it whatever you want as well. It doesn't affect anything. For the basis of the guide, I'll be naming the character Sorcerer because we're doing a Sorcerer guide. And let's finish. Okay, so let's start leveling this bad boy up. So level 2 Sorcerer, we're getting some hit points. We're getting some more spell slots. We unlocked class features, Sorcery points. Points, a pool of eternal power which can be used to alter magic spells one point per sorcerer level restored at long rest flexible casting allows the conversion of spell slots 
into sorcery points and vice versa as a bonus action. So this literally does what it says on the tin. So you can change your sorcery points into spells. Say for example, you need a haste in a fight and you don't have your haste up because you've used it already. You can use your sorcery points to convert it into that haste spell at cost, of course. As you see by the pictures here, you can see the ratio of what it costs to kind of like transform your sorcery points into a spell and to transform them back out into sorcery points. So you can kind of see what cost it is and how you can utilize that. It can be very strong. It's good utility, obviously, because sometimes there will be situations where you really want to cast that fireball, but you don't have it up. Or sometimes there'll be situations where you want to use one of your meta magic sorcery point feats and you can't either because you have no sorcery points. So being able to flex back and forth between the two is very strong utility. Let's go next. Back into the spell page. So we're going to ignore the unlearn spell because we don't really want to unlearn anything at this moment in time. And the class spell we'll take is jump. Reason being is sometimes you need to get to a chest, sometimes you need to get a platform. Having jump at the beginning of the game when you don't really have much jumping ability is a great nice addition to the spell book. Let's finish. Up to level three we go. More hit points, more spell slots, and now we unlocked class features, meta magic. So this is where it gets interesting. You gain the ability to twist your spells to suit your needs. You gain two meta magic options of your choice. Let's go next and have a look at these bad boys. So we've got a few choices here. We've got careful spells. So allied creatures affected by the spell automatically succeed their saving throws. And otherwise, if I throw a fireball at everyone, I can use careful spell using one of my sorcery points to stop it from hitting all my party members. They've got distance spell, doubles the range of a spell or change the range of a touch spell to 30 feet. Once again, if you want to kind of elongate your spell casting ability and be like some sort of sniper elite ghost warrior from across the battlefield, one sorcery point is all you need for that. The more empowered spell, all damage dice rolls of one or two are re-rolled, keeping the new result. Second chance Sunday, kind of meta magic feat. Uh, if you roll badly, just gives you another chance to roll a bit higher. Then we've got extended spell, doubles the duration of spell lasting one minute or more to a maximum of 24 hours. So you've got some buffs you want to keep on, say for example, haste, put this on, you know, cast the haste on, haste will last for a lot longer. Then we've got heightened spell, can force a creature to roll the saving throw with a disadvantage. This, this makes sure that your spells are guaranteed to hit. As you can see, the ratios here, we've got like 1.1.1.1.1. 1 point, 1 point, 1 point, 1 point. This costs three. The reason why it costs three is because it's really strong, because it literally, all your spells you cast with this gives the creature a disadvantage and saving against them. So in other words, you're more guaranteed to hit your spells. So for example, use a blindness, and the creature has a con save or really high con, this will almost not guarantee it, but it'll give you a really, really high chance of hitting it. Then we've got Quicken Spell. So you can cast a main action spell with a bonus action instead. Though you can't cast another spell during the same turn, except for cantrips, cost two sorcery points. So this just means that if you want to cast a fireball as your bonus action, go ahead. That's literally what it means. Then we've got Twinned Spell. If the source spell targets one creature only, it adds another target. So you can see here, Sorcery points cost, the cost depends on the spell level. So say for example, if I want to cast out a haste, normally haste is only on one target because it takes a concentration slot. But say for example, I want to cast a haste on two martial classes. Say for example, a barbarian and a ranger. This will hit them both and give them both haste. So it's kind of like two for one discount. It's very, very strong. So we're going to take Twin Spell. We're going to take Heightened Spell. I'm going to go next. Back in the spell book once again. So we're going to unlearn Jump. It literally outstay its welcome big time. You know, we didn't get a chance to use it because we're doing a guide. And then we are going to quickly go for the list. Once again, I'll give it a rating kind of out of five. I won't give much detail on the ones I don't pick just because I want to keep the guide short and sweet, as I said before. So Blindness on a Sorcerer. I'm picking this, by the way. On a Sorcerer, this turns into like a 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5, just because we have the kind of the Frighten ability, the bonus action. So this allows us to kind of decrease the saving throw of the creature we use it on. If we hit the bonus action first, that means this makes it a lot more reliable. And obviously, as you can see there, I cannot see anything disadvantaged on attacks. Attacks against a creature have an advantage. That's very, very strong in this game. Having advantage attacks on a creature for everyone and giving the creature or whatever you're facing disadvantage on yourself when it tries to attack you is insane. It literally completely cripples enemies pretty strong. So on a Sorcerer, I give this literally a 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5 just because you have more ways of hitting it. And on top of that, we have the heightened magic as well. So even if we really, really wanted a blind on someone, we can put a heightened magic blindness on something to make sure we pretty much almost guaranteed to hit it. Only problem is it's got the same throw of con. Literally, that's why I kind of thought 
This isn't that great on a wizard. Blur, 3 out of 5. Darkness, 2 out of 5. Dark Vision, 0 out of 5. Hold Person, 4 out of 5. Invisibility, 4 out of 5. Knock, 5 out of 5. I'm taking Knock as well. Mainly because I don't like it when I get locked out of chests and loot. Loot in these kind of games is quite hard to come by. So if you fail a lock pick and you don't get in it, and you've got no other way of getting into it, that's going to really, really vex me. So having Knock as kind of like a last resort when you fail that lock pick will stop my stress and my rage from building up too high. Then Levitate, we'll give that 2 out of 5. Misty Step, 5 out of 5. Uh, rate of Enfeeblement, that's our origin, so we haven't really got much choice, but, you know, 3 out of 5. Scorching Ray, 4 out of 5. D Invisibility, 2 out of 5. Shatter, 1 out of 5. Spider Climb, 1 out of 5 as well. And finish! Leveling up to level 4, so we've got more hit points, got some more spell slots, and we've also got a choice between a Ability Score Increase or a Bonus Feat. We're going to go for the ability score increase just because we need to be able to hit our spells. Our spells are limited, limited supply, so making sure they actually do hit is really, really helpful. So let's boost up the charisma stats, make sure we can hit our spells more and do more damage as well, and then go next. So back into the spell book, we get to pick another class cantrip. Our choices are Sparkle, Rare Frost, Firebolt, and Acid Splash. I feel like I'm going to go for Sparkle, just to sparkle things up a bit, to make sure we are well lit. Then we're going to ignore the unlearned spell, and we're going to take uh, Misty Step. Kind of like a get out of jail free card, in case we mess up, in case we get absolutely bamboozled and you know, bum rushed. Having a backup plan is always good, and finish. Level 5, more hit points, then we got plus 3 to all attacks, saving throws, skill, and tool checks, and spell DC. Then we've got Sorcerer spell casting, save DC is increased to 15, spell attack is increased to plus 7. And we've got some more spell slots to use and one spell to select. So let's go next and have a look at the spell book, what we've got to choose from now. Right, so we're going to be unlearning Misty Step, even though we just picked it up. We will be picking it up once again later on in the future, because as I said before, it's always good to have a get out of jail free card. I'm going to briefly go through all the spells here and kind of give them a rating out of five. I'll give a description of which ones I pick, but not for the rest. Let's kind of keep the guide short but sweet. So, can spell five out of five. Daylight, four out of five. Dispel magic, four out of five. Fear. It's our origin. We haven't really got much choice, but I'll give it two out of five. We've got Fireball, five out of five. Fly, two out of five. Haste, five out of five. Hypnotic Pattern, three out of five. Lightning Boat, three out of five. Protection from Energy. I guess a three, between a three and a four, to be fair. Between a three or four out of five. Then we've got Sleet Storm, one out of five. Slow, three out of five. Stinking Cloud, two out of five. Tongues, zero out of five. The ones we are picking is, of course, the Fireball and, of course, the Haste. Don't really need to explain it, but I will anyway. Fireball, it's always great to have a good, chunky AoE kind of damage. It just does so much destruction, especially at this level, level 5. It's a bit overtuned for its level, and I feel that's why it stays so relevant for most of the game. Then we've got Haste, and Haste on a martial class just makes them so, so goddamn strong. Having more attacks per turn, and being able to move faster, and getting more AC, it's just really insane. So Haste, especially, especially with twin magic where i can cast two haste on two martial classes that is insane absolutely insane for one concentration slot as well so i can put two haste on two people with one concentration slot so haste is insane on sorcerer right and finish up to level six so more spell slots and now we have unlocked class features of ventral spirits you can use a bonus action to call forth the spirits inside you for up to one minute you can target a three by three cell area they can see within 18 cells any opponent that enters the area for the first time on the turn or start its turn there must take a christmas saving throw or take 2d6 plus your christmas modifier in necrotic damage half damage on a successful save each turn you can use your bonus action to move the area by six cells once you use ventral spirits you can't use it again until you finish a long rest Unless you spend four sorcery points to use it again. Recharge Ventral Spirits. Spend four sorcery points to recharge Ventral Spirits. Power. Once again, Ventral Spirits doesn't cost concentration. It does really good damage. You can move it for bonus actions. You can cast it bonus actions. It's insanely strong, strong kind of passive spell. Or power, should I say. And next, back into the spell book again. So, ignore the unlearned spell. We're not unlearning anything just yet. And we are grabbing counter spell. Because once again, I said that's a five out of five. There's a reason why I didn't take Count Spell early, because there's not normally that many wizards at the beginning of the game. They're kind of like, in most of these kind of campaigns and stuff, they kind of ease you in a bit. They don't want to be hammering you with loads of spells, just because you're going to be like, what the hell was that? Why did I get completely fireballed and destroyed? So later on in the game, they start to introduce a bit more casters. So I feel like around level 6 is a good time to kind of pick up the Count Spell. Plus, as I said before, haste is insane on Sorcerer, and Fireball is a good chunk of damage when you're not hasting up things. So yeah, Count Spell comes in a bit later, and it's strong. You stopping opponent's spells 
especially if they're big, nasty spells, is insane. That can just literally win you a fight automatically. And finish. Level 7. More hit points, one spell to select. Let's go next back into the spell book. So let's have a quick look at our new kind of spells we got to choose from. Right, so let's start by ignoring the unlearn spell. We're not unlearning anything just yet. So quickly we're going to go through. So banishment, 4 out of 5. Blight, I give that a 3 out of 5 normally, but on a sorcerer, I give it a 5 out of 5. And as you can tell, I'm going to pick it because I'm talking about it. So, as you can see, the damage is very big, very chunky, beefy damage. With Twinned Metamagic, it allows you to hit twice as well. The saving throw kind of sucks as Con is one of the biggest saving throws for most monsters. But if you are able to hit that, especially using your, you know, your Twinned Magic to hit two targets, for the price of one, that is absolutely insane. It is literally one of the only spells in this spell level that can be used with the twin magic as well. So we're going to take Blight there. Confusion, I give that a 3 out of 5. Dimension Door, 1 out of 5. Dominic Beast, 1 out of 5. Greater Invisibility, 4 out of 5. Ice Storm, 3 out of 5. Phantasma Killer, 3 out of 5 again. Stone Skin, 2 out of 5. Wall of Fire, 4 out of 5. Up to the last level of the guide, level 8. So get more hit points, got another spell slot. Unlocked class features, ability score choice. So we can either choose ability score or a bonus feat. I'll quickly give you the options. So ability score will definitely just be pumping into charisma to allow our spells to hit more, do more damage and all those nice things we like to do. The other option at level eight, depending if you're taking a beating or your sorcerer or sorceress is just getting absolutely hounded and pounded. What you can do is you can grab the raised shield. So when you're about to get hit by a ranged attack, while wielding a shield, you can use your reaction to get a plus 3 AC until the end of the attacker's turn. And you also gain proficiency with shields, which means you're allowed to use shields on your sorcerer as well. So obviously that brings up your AC. You also get the reaction as well to use for hits on your sorcerer. So if you're having a hard time and everyone's kind of just pounding the crap at your sorcerer, take it. If you think you're okay, you can kind of stay in the back and chill out a bit. I'll go for the ability score increase just because it allows you to hit your spells more, allows you to do more damage, which in theory is a nice thing when you're playing the sorcerer. Okay, so we're back in the spell book for the last time for the guide. So we ignore the unlearned spell. So our choices here are pretty much between Misty Step and Scorching Ray. So as I said before, if you feel like you're getting your ass kicked, take the Misty Step. It allows you to get out of jail for free. If you feel like you're lacking a bit of damage on your team or a bit of single target damage, I mean, Scorching Ray is a no-brainer pick there. I'm going to take Misty Step just because I didn't take the shield, so that means I'm lacking AC, and I might need to have a Get Out of Jail free card. So Misty Step is what I'm going to take here. And let's go finish. Right, so that about wraps up my Sorcerer class guide. If you got any suggestions or any class guides you want me to do, please let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.